finish. You can see down that alley, you really have to bring that stick a little bit more towards your left shoulder to shoot overhand to increase your angle. And Anderson does a nice job and finishes there. We've got a whistle on the faceoff that will go against Renz Conlon, the faceoff man for the Seawolves. So offense sharing the rock and nice finish there from Augustine. Got Scandone picking up the assist, his fourth of the season. Another freshman who has been a contributor here for Drexel. Faceoff win is scooped up by Palinetti. Now he's got some issues with it. Saved right along midfield by Stony Brook, but he had a bounce. Balin was able to pick up that loose ball. Let's see what the call is here on the near side. Looks like it might be a man up for Stony Brook. Yeah, we got a flag down. Didn't, yeah, didn't quite see the flag. 15-yard skip pass right on the ear. And he continues to rack up points. His 50th of the season. So it brings us back to even strength. As that was a even strength faceoff. One backward by Drexel and Joseph. Loose. Donnelly's able to just follow that slide and turn the corner. So maybe that aggressiveness needs to be honed down a little bit. Just maybe a, a smarter slide, I think, would have helped Stony Brook there. It's through. That's a, an easy dunk for Drexel, but Sabella kind of with the, uh, you know, I think of it like scaling the fence in, in a baseball game and robbing the team of a home run. Faceoff win by Declan Mitchell. He goes right in and shoots high. Back here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, thanks to Delaware's win here earlier today over Fairfield, 17-7. to They are now 4-0 in CAA play. Winner of this game will join them at 4-0, and we're all tied up at four apiece here after one quarter in Philadelphia as Stony Brook wins the opening faceoff, shoots wide. Another good look for Declan Mitchell. He's had a couple of those straight off the faceoff. Stony Brook will keep the possession. Hits the gas again, and he's able to get to... 10 yards with a strong right hand and just buries the corner. A violation on Stony Brook here at the faceoff exit goes against Mitchell. So Drexel possession. And Anderson, four goals, including the game winner against Towson last week. He's got two here in the first half today. Yeah, you're on film and... You know, the coaching staff can help you like, hey, this guy can shoot. But until you get out on the field and you don't practice against the guy that can stretch the defense like that, it's really hard to kind of adapt your approaches. As, as a, And it actually is folks throwing a skip pass, you know, 25 yards when you're moving on the run like that. I would say that the king of it is Tom Schreiber. And uh, well, can he doing his best Schreiber impersonation right there? Well, and a... Kind of miscue on the back end there by Drexel. Christian Loud picks up the loose ball. Stony Brook and Anthony Gillard give the Calvert Hall product. Liam Kammer the assist, his second of his career. As the faceoff win is picked up by Conlin. Trying to float that pass across or sh shoot it. Either way, it stays out. And it ends up in the stick of McVicker. No one's really ready to slide. And he capitalizes. Face-off win by Joseph. He wins it backward. But some issues here once again for Drexel trying to clear off the face-off win. They do get it to Blumenthal. About 90 seconds to go in this opening half. And we'll get an offsides call. Yep. You know, it can be complicated off that face-off. 15 shots, and they're only down by one. So it's like, you know, for them, it's like, let's clean it up. Let's play better, and we should be winning this game. So I think both teams making cases, you know, probably in the halftime locker room for, for how the second half's going to go, but it's shaping up to be an entertaining one. A winner of this game will tie Delaware for the top seed at this point in the season at 4-0. and is right off the face-off. It's Renz Conlin. He gives the Seawolves a two-goal lead again. And that's huge. And I think there are two statistical categories that might be the most important in lacrosse, and that's your face-off percentage and your goalie percentage. 
and Drexel outplaying Stony Brook in both of those categories. But here, obviously, this is huge, not only just for momentum, but for confidence for the rest of, of the half for Stony Brook. Conlon's third goal of the season. As we've actually seen Joseph, the Drexel faceoff man, have a lot of success at the faceoff X so far today. But we've seen both Mitchell and Conlon have opportunities right off draws, winning them forward. And they finally cash one in. There from Joyner, nice job. And a, that's a big goal for Drexel, just to get them back, get them flowing a little bit after kind of a lull for them. And we've got a whistle, and it'll go Drexel's way. Loose ball. And finishes with his left hand, shooting the ball low. So quick ball movement, body movement, that'll usually lead to success on the offensive end. Well, and how about that cut by Semple that actually just cleared space out for Donnelly to be able to cut then behind him and make make the play? Yes, offensive coordinator Stephen Boyle will – Definitely be showcasing that in film this week. Loose oh, baby. ball, and it's Donnelly again. Back-to-back -back goals and Drexels in front. And I think that's Luke Carden, the, the pole on the assist. Yeah. Tucker Durkin will be showing this in the defensive film room. A pole all the way down in the offensive end, making plays in the ride. And Donnelly just cashing in. Johnny on the spot. Donnelly on the spot, we should say. <laughs> and we have a timeout for Stony Brook. They need, they want to talk things over. Three consecutive goals. Three goals in just over a minute for Drexel. And they have taken a 9-8 lead here early in the third quarter. Out of the timeout by Stony Brook after that third straight goal. It's another loose ball that comes into the Seawolves end. Ground ball scooped up by Kammer and the Dragons. So try that's that timeout for Stony Brook. Really just try. Being a great lacrosse player isn't necessarily about how fast you are, how big you are, or even how hard you can shoot it. It's about getting open for your teammates and then finishing on your opportunities. And Huber's done that today. Uh, Justin Joseph promptly wins another faceoff for Drexel. He has done a, a nice job at the X, keeping the ball, the offense for Drexel, especially here in the second half so far. Counterpart there, Jonathan Huber, who finishes with a nice low to high, snappy release. Tony Brook back in command now. Palinetti's third assist of the day is the faceoffs won by Codlin. Big hit ends up in the stick of Palinetti, and it draws a flag. Moving pick, I think that's gonna now trigger the penalty. Fine extended, so man, he is just letting him fly today. By the way, if you're wondering, Jonathan Huber's career high eight goals against Marquette last season when he was playing at St. John's in the Big East. This is a big face off for Drexel as McVicker had a chance at it and they got a they called a trip. And who says you can't feed? What is that? Two assists today? That doubles his uh, his season total. Yeah, what well, I'm, I'm going to say, how did he come into this game with only one assist for what we've seen here through two and a half quarters? Big time players step up in big games. Another face off win for Stony Brook. Shot wide by Conlin. He already has one today. Looking for number two. But Stony Brook smartly has the backup there. That becomes a safe shot as they keep the possession. And still in Palinetti, a chance to go back to work. Yes. We go along with his four goals. Yeah, Donnelly now five points today. Showing you why he leads this team in points. And going Drexel's way. Well, this has been as good as advertised. Two teams coming in, 3-0 and in conference play, and we are all tied up at 11 apiece as we start the final quarter. Travis Eldridge, Marcus Holman back with you. Stony Brook goes early on that first draw, the fourth, and so it's the Dragons.
And we'll get the... That's huge. Just making a play there. Sixth goal of the season for Augustine, his second of the day. The face-off X, Stony Brook sends Mitchell out there, and he wins the draw. It's That's a rotation huge. between Conlon and Mitchell. Big win. Faking, faking, and I feel like he threw him off his rhythm there, shooting in that kind of deceptive motion, so... Impressive goals on both ends for both these teams. We are locked and loaded here. Another face-off win for Mitchell. So Stony Brook maybe has found something there. And this in lacrosse, sometimes we overcomplicate it with schemes and movements and motions and blah, blah, blah. But you just got to run by your guy and, and score the ball. And Palinetti can do that with the best of them. Uh, and Joseph showing you maybe... Yeah, you heard us talking about, hey, he might be tired. He promptly wins it forward, <laughs> and he gets his team a possession. Yeah, what do, what do I know? I, I'm the, Like I said, I'm not the face-off of the cage, but it just seems like Tomac is, is drawing so much attention up in front of the goal, dodging and finishing. He's, he's such a presence up there for this Drexel offense. Joseph wins the clamp. Now he picks up the loose ball. Now the difficult part, can they get this across? It was really good stick work by Joseph after he won the clamp through a bunch of blue jer jerseys to get this possession for Drexel. But only go. three seconds to get it over, and they do. Style around the cage, and man, he's taking advantage of all his opportunities today. Joseph with a big face-off win, but once again, a lot of pressure from Stony Brook. Palinetti able to pick up the ground ball eventually. And he saves it over his head. He's unsettled. Look out. Volker and Coach Durkin are livid at the officials right now. Potentially a moving pick there. <laughs> oh, what a takeaway. Loud. He twigs Joseph and wow. Stony Brooks gets the possession. Joseph won the faceoff, but Christian Loud with a heck of a play. And the Seawolves have the ball.